So at this time, brothers and sisters, help me bring on our beloved brother, Mori Hodaya. They ain't calling me Diana. They ain't calling me Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Hallelujah. 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 Yokai. Yokai. That's not enough energy, Israel. Hallelujah. 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 Yokai. 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 Yah is awesome. Yah is awesome. I give thanks to the Most High for allowing me to be here in North Carolina, Charlotte. Yahweh has allowed me and my family and many of our brothers from Guyana who are considered family to travel through his ear, through his sky, and arrive here safely in the United States. That in itself is a blessing. But the reason why we're here is because we would like to let the community here in the United States know and understand that the awakening of the nation of Israel is international. Amen. It's global. We all have the right and have the ability to create change. Change that's so important. We live in a world where those that serve the Most High are considered abnormal. They are considered abnormal. And those who don't serve the Most High and are the wicked doers, they are considered normal. But I say this, in the minds of the abnormal, the normal is seen as abnormal. We are the normal ones. So they're going to consider our ways different. They're going to consider our doings different. But you have to become confident and embrace difference. If you live in a community and people see you the same as everybody else, as the wicked doers, then you're on a wicked team. You got to be different in everything that you do because you are the treasure of the Most High. You are His anointed. You are his ones that have the ability to inspire and to give aspiration to the world that a better day is coming. We in Guyana have been embarked on a new vision. And we call it and from the words that of our spiritual leader calling Mikael. We are on a, in a dawn of a new day. The dawn of a new day. Reuniting humanity reuniting humanity and rededicating humanity with Yah. Amen. We've been separated from the Creator for too long. Yes. The world has become separated from Yah for too long. Yes. Are you ready for change? Yes. Meaning if you're going to be willing to say you're ready for change, then it means it becomes personal. Yes. It's a spiritual mental filtering and purging you all we all come we all remember we use the term we filter water but do we filter our minds do we purge our minds of the wicked ways that's out there remember we were all taught and I'm gonna use this and it could be seen ambiguous but I'm gonna use it we were all taught to be circumspect about what we allow to enter our bodies. And most of the things that we think of as tangible and material things. But have we ever considered the things that we cannot see that we allow to enter our bodies? By the music we listen to? By the things we look at each other and we see a behavior pattern? Have we took a little time out to consider those things that are going into our minds and our bodies that's creating us to be like the ungodly. Those things are what's destroying us as a people. 
Those are the things that we allow, those things that are entering us and making us be normal in this ungodly world is the things that our children are looking at and they're imitating and wanting to be like that. Yeah. So that means, I remember traveling on a plane, coming here, my arms, and there were a number of individuals on a plane, but what stood out to me was that the, there was a Christian body on the plane. And brought on their shirts, on their shirts they had waiting for Jesus. And then they had Jesus is coming soon. And I begin to think, if the ungodly, the Gentiles, can boldly promote their ideology and their culture, what about the godly and the holy? You heard about the Supreme Court ruling. The anti is out there promoting the anti ways but we are afraid to be who we are. Who are we? The children of the Most High. We can't be afraid to wear our ZTO. We can't be afraid to wear our culture. We cannot be afraid to say, I need Yisrael. I am Israel. That's how we have to walk and be proud of it, and that's how the children are going to look and say, I am Israel. They're going to be faster to say, I'm an Israelite, than I'm a gang member. I'm a gang banger. Yes. I'm a basketball player. Yes. I could play good, but I'm fine with this, should I? <laughs> but that's not more important than being an Israelite. That's right. That should be foremost in our lives. Yes. But thinking about it and not doing anything about it is rhetoric. It's not making sense. It becomes personal. When you leave your home, when you listen to that music in a car, ask yourself, is that Israelite music? Is that godly music? But then we quick to say, from my day, from dealing with Israel, we're quick to say, I have the power to discern how it's gonna impact me. But everything we do is not always just about you. Sometimes it can influence the people that are around you be it your children, your friends, whoever it may be, you gotta make the difference. You gotta make the difference. Or if not, if we don't do that, then we reinventing the wheel. The cycle is gonna continue. We are gonna remain in the wilderness going around and around talking about going home. Just talking about it. As a nation, we wanna get home. As a nation, we got to be willing to change. As a nation, we got to be willing to grow together, be innovators, be creators, be engineers, get out there and be somebody and do something to reawaken our people. That's so important. In this world, and you all know it, wickedness, wickedness is prevalent. The Shabbat day is the one day we have a side to make a difference. Many times we all live in amongst the wolves as sheep. We begin, we must never allow the Shabbat day to become mundane, meaning just a ritual. Right. It must be something that you must sit and reflect and do right. deep introspection to make a difference. We're living in a world where Sexual promiscuity, sexual per, um, perversion, homosexuality, and harlotry is normal. It is normal. Our children are growing up at seeing that as normal. But we ought to be proud to say it is wickedness. Wickedness to the utmost. Don't allow them to begin to see it as normal. Lesbianism is not normal. As a brother once said in Guyana, sorry, not in Israel. Harlotry, sorry, not in Israel. Sexual promiscuity, sorry, not in Israel. Sexual perversion, sorry, not in Israel. The pause are limited, why? 
that I hope you're thinking. We are seeing it too much as normal. And as a teacher, I am telling you, the children see it as normal. Israelites, students, as well as non-Israelite students. In your absence, they're a part of it. In fact, I like to put it as, we gotta be careful not to be living an imitation of life. Yes. Meaning that on Shabbat day, it's easy to be an Israelite. Yes. And the other six days of the week, we living as the boys, John or whatever other name. And on Shabbat day, we are more Odaya, um, I'm so and so. But Shabbat day, the other days of the week, we Timmy. Rahim. We Rahim. We gun bangers, whatever you want to call it. I ask you to ask yourself one question. Which one is the real you? Which one is the real you? How much you time you spend meditating and thinking, this is internal about that character, that personality, which one of them you're helping to build the most? Ak so-and-so or Raheem? Or whatever other name you called in the streets. This is not Charlotte-based issue. This is an international issue. This is an international issue. We have to begin to do real introspection to find out who we really are. Because whether you admit it or not, or whether you know it or not, Yahweh knows who the true you are. You can hide it from every one of us in this room, but you can't hide it from Yah. And he's judging us according to that inner personality that we all display and that we all thinking about that sometimes is hidden from the world. That's why it's, a, it's written in the scriptures, may the light of Yah, may the Yah spirit go through me like a lamp, searching out our inward parts. All up in you the spirit of Yah is searching out to see if you're worthy to receive salvation. Uh -huh. As Israelites, our issue and our concern is about achieving salvation, not social reform. Socially reformed. If the Most High wanted us to be socially reformed, He would have kept us in Egypt. He would have allowed us to remain in Egypt and just change to be Israelites in Egypt. Now let's take it to Guyana, to America, to wherever we are. We cannot be socially reformed. <laughs> we gotta always seek salvation. Yeah. We cannot just say, okay, we're gonna, it's okay, this is there, we're gonna just make the necessary changes to fit in. We gotta aspire always to receive salvation from Yah. But again, I tell you, it all comes with introspection, thinking a little bit, pondering on how you can become a better Israelite, how you can change the world, because the world has to be changed. What impact you can have on making the world a better place for the next generation? What impact you can have or you will have to make sure that righteousness prevail and that we don't recreate by our PR. The sister read it when she was reading Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, the fourth chapter. It spoke about, remember they, when the wilderness said, remember what happened at the PR. Let's understand that we have to change our minds because there are those that is enticing us to recreate and re be in a situation of Baal Peor once again. We gotta make the change. They said that we are all, we are 
spiritual beings having a human experience. But I want to ask you this. What leads you? Your spiritual desires or your bodily desires? If we are spiritual beings, then what should lead us is our spirit, our spiritual desires. In fact, let's put it this way. If our body, bodily desires, lead our spirits, we are heading for eternal damnation. If the lusting of our bodies leads our spirit, lead our spirit, we are heading for eternal damnation. If our spirits, our spiritual desires, lead our bodily desires and control the soul and the body, we become heavenly spiritual beings. And if every one of us become heavenly spiritual beings, we create heavenly societies. We create heavenly worlds. A heavenly world where the anti yah have to live in a little hole. And the godly, we can speak out loud and say, I'm a, I'm a holy person and not be ashamed of it. Yeah. We can speak out loudly and say, homosexuality is wickedness yes. and not be afraid yes. to face ridicule. Yes. We gotta make the change. Yes. And the day is gonna come, the dawn of the new day, it starts right here. Malachi, the third chapter, and the 16th verse says these words. 16 to 18, Malachi 3, and this day is now. Tom Shee. Then they that feared Yehovah spoke one with another. They that feared Yehovah spoke one with another. That's you and I, Tom Shee. And Yehovah hearkened and heard, and a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared Yehovah and that thought upon his name. We are thinking on Yah today, Tamshi. And they shall be mine, saith Yehovah of hosts, in the day that I do make even mine own treasure, and I will spare them as a man's spirit. Even the most high said, and that day, when we begin to do to go to the book of remembrance, <laughs> he's gonna spare those that fear him, Tamshi. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth Elohim and him that serveth him not. That day we're going to be able to discern. Today we have the power to discern between those that serve in the Most High and those that serve in him not. How do you have the power to discern? When you look at them, the more the spiritual eye of the Creator, His laws, His statutes, and His commandments, you can look and see how many of your peers are godly and how many are ungodly. You can look and you can see within yourself, are you godly or are you ungodly? Because that's foremost, looking at your actions, your behavior. And if they said, if a person walk like a duck, quack like a duck, what you gonna call them? Now if you act unholy, you speak unholy, you listen to unholiness, then what are you? But we gotta change that, we are holy, right? So we gotta what? Act holy, think holy, be holy, then we gonna become a holy people. Holy people for Yah. My question goes back to a famous saying that, once, uh, that a speaker once said, many said it. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Now we're going to go to the Hebrew. Are we ready? I need not come. I need not come. I'm ready. I hope you are. May y'all bless us all. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Lord, 